The thing about technology is that it can be used to create or destroy, to build or to tear down, to help or to harm. It all depends on the person who is wielding the technology. As with every new technology, quantum computing also brings new risks and vulnerabilities. In the wrong hands, quantum computers could break currently unbreakable encryption or hack into secure systems. Quantum technology can considerably enhance measurement capability, sensing, precision and computation power and efficiency of the current and future weapons. The challenge, then, is to harness the power of quantum computing while mitigating the risks. This will require a concentrated effort from governments, businesses and individuals worldwide. Conventional computers are based on bits. A bit is like a switch. It can be either zero or one. Every software or video is made up of millions of these bits. Using binary bits makes conventional computers easier to build and control. In contrast, a quantum computer uses qubits. A qubit is a unit of quantum information. It is like a switch that can be both zero and one simultaneously. This makes quantum computers much more powerful for specific problems than conventional computers. For example, suppose you have a problem that involves looking through many possibilities, like cracking a password. In that case, a quantum computer can do this much faster than a classical one, because it can explore all the possibilities simultaneously. Similarly, suppose you have a problem that involves finding the best solution from many possibilities, like finding the shortest route through a maze. In that case too, a quantum computer can do this much faster. Imagine an AI on a quantum computer. It would be able to try all possible moves at the same time and find the best move much faster than an AI on a classical computer. Would you like to try? Yes. I would like to try. <laughs> it's like asking me if I want to drive a Ferrari. What would you do if you had access to a quantum computer? There are a few things I would do if I had access to a quantum computer. First, I would use it to factor large numbers much faster than classical computers. This could be used to break currently unbreakable encryption, like the RSA encryption that is used to protect online communications. Second, I would use it to search large databases much faster than classical computers. This could be used to find new drugs or to design new materials. Third, I would use it to simulate quantum systems much more accurately than classical computers. This could be used to design new materials or to study chemical reactions. Sounds impressive. How close are we to building a quantum computer? There is significant research being done in quantum computing, and there have been some significant milestones achieved in recent years. However, we are still far from having a working quantum computer. The moment we find ourselves is the convergence of not just one technology, but three technologies that are going to alter how we practice science and how we develop technology. I like to summarize them as bits plus neurons plus qubits. It is challenging to build, operate and maintain quantum computers. They must operate in a lab-type environment with a stable temperature of near absolute zero. Companies like IBM and Google invest large sums of money into hardware development. Today is the closing of the chapter on Quantum System 1, as we prepare for our next generation IBM Quantum System 2. In his book AI 2041, Li Kai-Fu says, it is estimated that a quantum computer will likely need a million or more physical qubits in order to deliver the performance of a 4,000 logical qubit quantum computer. Quantum computers are prone to noise from various sources like disturbances in Earth's magnetic field, cosmic rays, mobile phones and Wi-Fi. Even the neighboring qubits influence each other by mere proximity. To remedy this noise, we need to use a certain number of physical qubits to get one logical qubit that is acceptable and error tolerant. The number of physical qubits depends on the error correction scheme and the error rates of each physical qubit, and it can go up to 1000 physical qubits. We would need thousands of logical qubits but millions of physical ones to break the RSA encryption. 
You said you would use a quantum computer to factor in large numbers, which you can use to break the RSA encryption. Why would you break an RSA encryption? There are a few reasons why I would break an RSA encryption. To access information that is encrypted with RSA encryption. To study how RSA encryption works and to find ways to improve it. To find new methods of encryption that are more secure than RSA encryption. Which encryption does Bitcoin system use? Bitcoin uses the RSA encryption algorithm to encrypt and decrypt messages. So you could break it and get in possession of a large number of Bitcoins? Yes, if I were able to break the RSA encryption that is used in the Bitcoin system, I would be able to get access to a lot of Bitcoins. How can we improve our healthcare system with the use of quantum computers? Quantum computers can be used to search large databases of medical records to find new trends and patterns. They can be used to develop new drugs and treatments or to simulate medical procedures to find new ways to improve them. What about the military? Quantum computers can be used in the military to develop new weapons, to find new ways to defeat enemy defenses, and to develop new ways to protect military secrets. Did you know that China has built a quantum network between Beijing and Shanghai? No, I did not know that China had built a quantum network. It is the world's first quantum communication network that combines over 700 optical fibers on the ground with two ground-to-quantum satellite links to achieve quantum key distribution over a total distance of over 4,500 kilometers. Just take us very basically through how this process works. So, so it's quite simple. We send a sequence of single photon. Yes. Then we try to perform a, a, a measurement onto the receiver photon. Then also we need to compare a subsequence of the general key. It is considered impenetrable and therefore the future of secure information transfer. Anton Zeilinger, one of this year's winners of the Nobel Prize in Physics, had worked on the development of Missius the quantum satellite I just mentioned. Mr. Deininger from Austria, Alan Aspect from France, and John F. Clauser from the US won this year's Nobel Prize in Physics for their work on quantum mechanics. For experiments with entangled photons, establishing the violation of Bell inequalities and pioneering quantum information science. Any ideas on what awaits us in the future? There are many exciting things that are likely to happen in the future of quantum computing. We are likely to see more powerful quantum computers that can solve previously unsolvable problems. We are also likely to see new applications of quantum computing that we cannot even imagine today. Can you use your imagination? Some potential future applications of quantum computing include developing new drugs and treatments for diseases designing new materials with novel properties, developing new algorithms for AI that can learn more efficiently, breaking currently unbreakable encryption algorithms, finding new ways to hack into secure systems, creating new weapons of mass destruction. Let's hope the last one won't come true. Yes, let's hope that quantum computers will be used for good and not for evil. If you have enjoyed the video, consider subscribing. Thank you.